Hello, my name is Tammy O'Callaghan, and tonight I'd like to talk to you a little bit about Mercy Otis Warren. She's a fascinating woman who was ahead of her time in many ways. She's rightly to, uh, rightly considered to have been a patriot, fighting for the cause of liberty in the American colonies, but her weapon was not a sword or a gun. Her weapon was a pen, and she used wit and words as ammunition. She lived in a time when women were to be seen and not heard, and were to be submissive to their husbands, the menfolk in general. But Warren received not only the approbation of her husband, but also of men like John Adams, whose opinion she often sought when she needed encouragement for her efforts or as a sounding board for her thoughts. Um, that came from Cheryl Oreovitz. Uh, she wrote plays, dramas, satires, and essays, and as early as 1772, she was using her work to skewer public figures like Governor Thomas Hutchinson. Like many women of her uh, age, she wrote anonymously at first. This was perhaps for two reasons. First of all, in order to get published, the, the opinions of women were not highly regarded, and um, so that helped her get published, but also it protected her from some backlash. She was writing some things that were not very popular with those in authority at the time. Um, to Adams, she worries that if she is too harsh and cutting with her words, she will be considered unchristian-like and may reflect badly on her gender. She writes, and this is a quote from her, a little personal acrimony might be justifiable in your sex, but must not the female character suffer if she indulges her pen to paint in the darkest shades, even those whose vice and the venality have rendered contemptible? Adams wrote back to Mercy, encouraging her that she had no peer in America who could use the pen to such great effect. Warren's family, both her family of origin and the one into which she married, were politically active and aware. Her interests naturally flowed out of those among whom she associated herself. Although Warren was befitting her gender, was, as was befitting her gender, not formally educated, her father, understanding that she had a great intellect, allowed her to sit in on her brother's tutoring as he was being prepared for college, and he later shared with her uh, the authors that he, to which he was being exposed. And, um, she benefited greatly from that, and as a consequence, she had a, an education that was really far superior to many men in the colonies, uh, let alone women of that, of that time. She corresponded liberally with many people, including the Washingtons, the Adamses, the Winthrops. She was conversant on a wide range of topics, and her letters show a penchant for thoughtful evaluation. Um, she was particularly fond of history and knew the value of current people knowing their history so that they can make better decisions for the future. She was outspoken about moral issues, and she seemed to find a moral issue in every sphere. One of her letters was to her son, Winslow. She was, uh, he was a favorite of hers, and she wanted to warn him about Lord Chesterfield, and whom she considered to have words that were honeyed poison lurking beneath the fairest flowers and fancy of fancy and rhetoric. Uh, the letter was so impressive that Abigail Adams sent it to a friend and it ended up being published in three newspapers. Um, she, she was widely respected for her view on morality. Uh, perhaps one of the most unique features that Warren brought to her history of the Revolutionary War was her female vantage point that preferred to discuss the ideas, emotions, feelings of the Revolution more than strategy and situations of the armies and, ba and their battles. Not that women can't discuss those things, but I find personally as, as a woman that I enjoy understanding the motivations behind what people are doing and, and the responses, the reactions that are happening as a result. Um, she talks about in her history of, of the revolution, she talks about, quote, the general enthusiasm in the cause of liberty that for several years pervaded all ranks in America. It not only benefits women and girls to hear this type of viewpoint from, from a contemporary of the event, it broadens the scope for all historians and students of history to hear these voices. Female students can uh, specifically benefit from her example as a wife and mother. There's also often a false dichotomy in our society that, one, that a woman has to either be a career woman or a wife and mother, but Mrs. Warren was both. She raised five boys and, 
uh, by all evidence, cared greatly about them and their future. And she was a good, dutiful wife. And she considered herself an equal marriage partner, which was a rare thing in those days. According to the guidelines of historical study, historians should try to maintain an unbiased viewpoint in their research, in, um, including the works of people like Mercy, Warren, o Mercy Otis Warren, helps provide historians with another voice to better inform and broaden their research. She was a woman who provided an example of a person who made the most of the talents that she was given in the circumstances of her life. Thank you.